What's up guys, we are back with another Marvel Legends review, jumping back into the Bone Breaker Build-A-Figure wave. Uh, so of course an X-Men themed wave, taking a look at one of, maybe, yeah, probably, probably my most anticipated figure in this wave. Not just because of who it is, I've really wanted Vulcan because, well, I really like the storyline he comes from. I love the War of Kings stuff, I love Star Jammer stuff, I love Cosmic X-Men stuff, and he very much falls into that range. But because this is the Bucky Cat body replacement going forward. So this is our, our fully pinless standard male body going forward. So I'm really curious uh, to see what this guy can do. So uh, we've got Vulcan here in standard legend style packaging, of course, figure there in the window, uh, X-Men logo on the bottom. We've got David Nakayama artwork for this particular wave. So you got a shot of Vulcan there on the side panel. And then the back of the box is a larger shot of that. We've got our lineup and build a figure for the wave. And then a, a tiny little, little bio for the third Summers brother. So let's do it. Let's pull him out and take a look. And here we go, out of the package, Marvel Legends Vulcan figure. You know, again, one that I've really been looking forward to for a number of reasons. I'm a big, big fan of the storyline this guy came out of, you know, Deadly Genesis, moving into War of Kings, that kind of stuff. A lot of Star Jammers action, a lot of Cosmic X-Men uh, stuff, which really does it for me. It's, it's one of those things. I love Cosmic. I love X-Men when it comes to Marvel. Mash them together, and it just works for me on that level as well. But of course, this guy is the beginnings, uh, in many ways, of a new era of Legends as we are going to start, or, you know, as far as I know, going to start phasing out the Bucky Cap body in, in favor of this. So this is our new, uh, basically pinless, entirely pinless, standard male body. So like your, your, your normal Marvel Legends figure, not the, not the slightly smaller ones, not the super scrawny ones like Pizza Spidey figures, and then not your beefier, beefier figures. This is your, you know, peak fitness kind of uh, kind of figure. Uh, so this guy is going to start phasing that old Bucky Cat body out that has been used for a really long time and it and its own right, you know, it ushered in a new era of Marvel Legends all its own. Uh, so this guy has has some big shoes to fill, literally. Uh, it is still a very similar figure, like we're not really reinventing the wheel, we're just making it in many ways look better, I, I think, because uh, the articulation is still very similar. It's just aesthetically more pleasing and then some of these parts uh, aren't necessarily as scrawny. Bucky Cap was was kind of scrawny in some ways at times. Uh, this guy does seem to be a little bit more fleshed out. So uh, let's see what he can do. See how he moves around. Uh, you've got a head that can look super far up. Really good down. You don't really have too much tilt, but there is a little bit of bobble side to side. Then you've got full rotation. We're still on a disc hinge here. Arms out at the shoulders. They rotate. We've got a butterfly joint on this body now. It's not the greatest, but it does, you know, it's better than nothing, uh, but it's not super, super dynamic. It's gonna help, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna have him, you know, uh, going all the way across his chest. We've got our bicep swivel, pinless double jointed elbows. So, you know, full range there. You've got hinges and rotation at the wrist. They're lateral hinges uh, on these hands for this particular body, this particular figure. Ab crunch, we still have an ab crunch. You know, I, I wonder if down the road we're gonna see something like Lightning Collection or something like G.I. Joe Classified, but we are still uh, in the crunch uh, waist swivel uh, era of Legends with this guy. So crunch backwards, forwards really, really nicely. I mean, the crunch does work really well. And then you've got a twist down there, of course. Legs out, not full splits, but, but pretty good. And it is very clean down there, so I do like that. Kick forward, backwards slightly. You've got your thigh cut up there, double jointed pinless knees, of course. So all the way back. And then you've got a boot cut and then you've got hinges. There's no, nothing getting in the way of the hinges. And then we've got rocker. The rockers though on these feet, they seem kind of weird to me. Like they have detents in them. So they actually do want to like lock in place, which has posed, no pun intended, a little bit of an issue for me, kind of getting him in like a walking position. Uh, it just took a little bit more effort than I thought it was going to, but it does seem to make him a little bit more stable at the same time. So he's still very much, you know, like a, a normal Marvel Legends figure. He just happens to be pinless, and I think he, you know, he looks a lot better as a result. So going forward, we can see a lot more uh, cleanliness when it comes to figures. No more, you know, mismatched pegs or anything like that, and just overall a much cleaner presentation with a lot of that same articulation that we've we've come to expect at this point. Now, aesthetically, I'm not sure Vulcan is going to be the most exciting figure in this wave, but when it comes to when it comes to being a pinless figure. 
it's not a bad entry because he's very, very clean and it shows off the just how sleek it can be when you've got a figure that's essentially in a, you know, a onesie and he has nothing to sort of encumber that sculpt. Everything is very clean and it flows really well. So there's nothing in the elbows and there's nothing in the knees down here. Uh, so he is for the most part, you know, a lot of cast plastic, but he does have some, he does have some paint. There's some metallic for these blues. You've got the cast swirly metallic for uh, the feet and the ankles. And the one thing I will say that I really like in it when it comes to this being, you know, maybe sort of, um, you know, the new mold, so to speak, for figures going forward. The feet on this guy, you know, it's not something I usually focus on too much, but the feet on this guy, they, they seem a little bit more proportional because Bucky Cap figures usually have like those really, really small feet. They don't they don't necessarily look right to me, uh, but these look a little bit more proportional for, you know, if for better or worse. We've got a really cool looking belt on here. So this, I think this is new. You know, someone correct me if I'm wrong. It's hard to keep track of that kind of stuff. Uh, but you do have the X emblazoned on there. Musculature on this guy looks really nice. You know, he's he's supposed to be like peak fitness kind of figure, uh, kind of character. So he's not super huge, but he's also not exactly slender either. He is, uh, he's pretty svelte. And uh, I think the sculpt on him is really nice. Again, it's all about kind of continuity of design for me when it comes to this type of thing where we're getting all this pinless technology. And, and he looks good. The one thing that I will think uh, or will say stands out here in terms of the pinless aspect of this figure is that you are going to see that thing that we've seen from time to time where the joints do look like they are a different shade of, in his case, red than the actual arms. Because I'm assuming the, the durometer on... Uh, on the joints, the hardness factor is going to be different, so they are a little bit darker. It's not too bad, and you know we've certainly seen stuff like this for years and years and years. But it does something uh, to me, you know, kind of catches the eye a little bit when I see stuff like this. So, so there are some color shade differences that you're going to encounter on this figure. But I think for the most part, you know, like all the way back. It's hard to tell. Uh, otherwise, though, I do think he looks pretty good. I do have one little paint flub, which is unfortunate. You know, I found this, I actually found this guy in store, and I, I tried to find the best looking one, but the uh, butterfly was in like that, so I couldn't see this little nick, so there's some red peeking through, which is unfortunate, but it's kind of kind of the game we play, right? Otherwise, I mean, it's a cool looking suit. I like this design. It's very much a point in time thing. Uh, so when I think of Vulcan, this is kind of the look I think of. And then of course we've got uh, this new head sculpt up here, which I think looks pretty good. This is a very specific kind of thing for him uh, when it comes to kind of showing off his powers a little bit. So you've got him sort of with the uh, blanked out pupils. You've got a little bit of his like power seeping through around the eyes and then those yellow, yellow eyes with a little bit of a you know, a messy hairdo going on up here, which does look really nice. Not much paint to speak of up there, uh, but it does look good. Lips and the eyes and the eyebrows in particular are pretty cleanly painted. And for the most part, I think this very much looks like him from, from pretty much uh, any angle. One thing I will say, though, is that he doesn't really come with a lot of stuff. And this is one of those characters that I kind of wish had the accessories that showcased his power just because he does have a lot of stuff that could go with him. Uh, he could have, you know, a more angry expression because, of course, he's a lunatic. And it'd be nice to have, like, a yelling expression or something with, you know, maybe, like, some energy coming out of his eyes or an optic blast of some kind or some hands uh, that have blast effects or anything like that because all this guy does come with are some just regular old style pose hands, which I'm always up for hands, but he doesn't have anything to do with them. Uh, so he does look pretty good. I'm really happy overall with the presentation on this guy. I do wish he, however, had a few things you could change him up uh, just to make him look a little bit more expressive in some ways. Now, as far as size comparisons go, we've got to talk about Bucky Cap style figures. We've got to talk about other X-Men. We've got to talk about Hasbro stuff in particular because this guy is is going to be, you know, setting a new standard going forward. So we've got our Jim Lee Cyclops here on the left, which is which is a very much a Bucky Cap style figure. And we've got a Wolverine here on the right. And you can see that, that Vulcan is not much different from Bucky Cap in terms of overall uh, height. He's a little bit beefier. You know, he's not, he's not as scrawny in certain areas. He's got a little bit bigger thighs. Uh, chest is a little bit broader, I think. The, the shoulders also seem a little bit more well-rounded. But they're still very close, though. They're not going to be out of scale with each other. Like, they very much fit. And then he is still taller than Wolverine. He's not towering over him tall, but he's still pretty big by comparison. Uh, let's move Wolverine aside. Uh, here is a larger Marvel Legend. So here is uh, Gladiator. And you can see, you know, Gladiator is, of course, a lot bigger on a much larger style of body. But for a figure that kind of goes with Vulcan in some ways, there's a good example. And then here is Anon Legends, 
a Hasbro figure. So there's the G.I. Joe classified Storm Shadow. And you can see that, you know, these, of course, are different lines. So he is a little bit taller than Storm Shadow still, but they aren't they aren't exactly at a scale with one another. And then here is here's a neck of turtle just for something a little bit different. And then for something, uh, I don't know, completely different, you know, just for size sake in general, here is a Super 7 reaction for a, you know, 3.75 inch figure. So you get an idea of what it looks like in terms of stuff that is wildly out of scale. So I think this body is sized pretty well. It's going to fit nicely with other stuff in Marvel Legends for sure, but it's not going to look out of place with your current Bucky Cap, you know, standard normal male figure uh, display. So yeah, overall, really happy with this figure, enjoying playing around with him quite a bit, honestly. Uh, you know, just having this this new change-up for Legends in hand is kind of exciting. I'm really curious to see where they take this body, who's going to get it, how are they going to utilize it, what figures are we going to be able to go backwards on and kind of, you know, give us some new iterations on. Like, as, as much as I don't want to have to buy another one, I would absolutely gobble up a new Cyclops on this body just to give me more of this kind of pinless technology and make my figures look that much more seamless because, you know, at the end of the day, it really does matter to me. Like, I do think these figures look a lot better as a result of what they're doing here. They move really well still, and in, in many cases, the articulation does seem to flow a lot better. So it's kind of cool uh, to have Vulcan be this, you know, sort of guinea pig kickoff figure uh, when it comes to doing this. I do wish, of, however, that he did have a few more things. You know, he comes with a lot of bath parts, but I wish he had a few more uh, things just for himself to flesh out this figure, to flesh out this character a little bit more, because I do think he has a lot of options that could have been thrown in here that unfortunately weren't. So that's going to do it for this look at the Marvel Legends Vulcan. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.